on the Medical Watch, a surgical fix for a common sleep problem. WGNZ and Bear is here with more on an implantable device designed to help people breathe better at night. It's estimated up to 20% of the American population suffers with sleep apnea, a chronic condition that causes repetitive stops in breathing and decreased oxygen levels while sleeping. Just this week, we reported on a possible connection between sleep apnea and Alzheimer's disease. That's why relief is so critical. Now some patients are turning to surgery to help end the nightmare. So today's the big exciting day. We're going to activate this thing and get it rolling. Debbie Victor has been waiting for this day, an end to her sleepless nights. I feel exhausted much of the time. I could, I felt like, I feel like I could literally just fall asleep. A sleep study revealed surprising results. Debbie's blood oxygen levels dropped to 66% at night, a number that should be in the high 90s. It's a real problem. This puts a lot of stress on all of our vital organs, and that's why it can lead to an increased risk of things like strokes, heart attacks, and it can also now, we've seen uh, emerging literature to suggest that it is associated with an increased risk of early Alzheimer's disease as well. I think there's a huge misnomer about their, out there about sleep apnea because I think people relate it to obesity or chronic smoking and really it's airway anatomy. The cardiac sonographer who works long shifts at the hospital tried a CPAP machine and a dental device to help her open her airway at night. Neither worked for her lifestyle. Now she's hoping this will, an upper airway stimulator implant. It looks like a pacemaker for the heart, but the Inspire device helps regulate the airway by targeting the source of the blockage in sleep apnea patients. And so this device gets implanted in the body, uh, usually somewhere in the lower chest, and then there's a lead that is connected to this which stimulates the nerve controlling the tongue. That pushes the tongue forward, opening the airway and stopping that repetitive obstruction that's happening during sleep. Northwestern Medicine sleep surgeon Dr. Michael Awad implanted the device in Debbie's chest about a month ago. In my right hand, we've uh, gone ahead and isolated the portions of the nerve that are responsible for moving the tongue forward. After connecting one lead to the nerve in the tongue, Dr. Awad attached another between Debbie's ribs. And that lead is detecting breathing, sending a signal to the device, and then stimulating the airway to open in line with breathing. Four weeks after the procedure and once the incisions had healed, yes. Dr. Awad officially fired up the device during an office visit. As he increased the level of stimulation on the nerve, Debbie could feel her tongue move on its own. So that's stimulating again. That is weird. <laughs> okay. I could feel the pressure in the back. It wasn't painful. It was interesting, but it was enough to let me know that it's working. At home, Debbie will use a remote control to turn on the device each night before bed. So you're going to press the play button and then you're going to hold it right over the implant yourself. Every night. Every night. Anybody who's suffering with sleep apnea that hasn't had success with traditional medical therapies, those are classically things like CPAP or oral appliances, or those who are looking to get off of CPAP may be considered for this type of procedure. I'm going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> The device's battery in the chest lasts about 10 to 12 years and then will have to be replaced. There are risks, though rare according to Dr. Awad, associated with the procedure, including tongue numbness or weakness, which can be permanent. Back to you.